All judges. I'm Koi Lei Elliott and I'm from the School of Science and Technology Singapore. This was my first year participating in RoboCup and I've been part of SSC's Robotics Club known as Robotics at Apex for the past one and a half years. I have learned a lot about Code Space Robot and I think the most importantly was that simulators are very different from physical play fields. So this was my first time working with simulators and I wasn't used to working in such a personal environment. It's like attending a concert and watching a music video at home. When watching a music video at home, there isn't the atmosphere and it's a bit harder to get accustomed to it having attended a, a few robotics competitions. Nevertheless, I, I just spent in more hours and in the end, I managed to become accustomed to this environment. Um, I have gained a lot of valuable insight through this IQ challenge and especially the experience of working in robotic simulators. We're still in the middle of the pandemic and I and maybe not even at a peak yet and many more competitions will be held online as well as in school trainings. So by work having this first hand experience with the iCool simulator I can better prepare myself for future competitions or trainings to come. So um after viewing the sharing videos on the RCAP Academy YouTube channel, the Participant I was most interested to learn from was RU7809 because he used an algorithm with a coordinate system to determine the destination of the robot and that to me is quite an impressive feat because having a coordinate system allows for a quite a consistent run and it will also allow for consistency in between runs. I hope that I can learn from the uh, coordinate system and use it as a base form to make perhaps my own coordinate system for future uses and other competitions or trainings. I can share my knowledge on robotics and AI with others by presenting to my clubmates about my iCool experience or even maybe my classmates. I can also keep all my experiences, uh, my algorithm ideas, um, robot designs, all these in a notebook for myself as well as for my friends or maybe my juniors who might come into the club in the future. So, in terms of my games and strategies, one of the most important things I believe I used was using this diagram. It was This diagram summarizes the three main things I did in designing my algorithm was to avoiding borders, traps, and no signal zones, and picking up all objects, as well as depositing them immediately. So, my obviously, I participated in the Cold Space Rescue under 19 category, and my first strategy was to avoid all traps, borders, and signal, no signal zones. This prevented the robot from entering such areas unexpectedly and allows for ease of mind coding other features. When the robot encounters pink or yellow, it will immediately swerve and this is to prevent unexpected point loss from you know, accidentally entering a trap. And when and reaching the border, it will immediately turn 180 degrees, thereby immediately preventing um, going over the border which would result in a 10 second penalty which is very inefficient in terms of time. As you can see in the video, the robot is entering the yellow zone but immediately swerving out to prevent point loss. Secondly, instead of going for a red, black and blue object, I decided to just to pick up all end objects because I found this more efficient than forcing a super object. By picking up these objects instead, not only will my points become higher as each of the individual points are still quite high and when I pick up all these objects and a super object does spawn, it might be very far away from the point I'm at. So as you can see on the play field, the red, blue and black objects are basically at three different corners of the play field and that makes it very inconvenient to try and navigate to pick each one of them up and it also results in a large waste of time. My last strategy was to deposit objects immediately. While the efficiency seems to be reduced, it actually allows for a higher score to be obtained ASAP because the robot might enter a trap despite the foolproof trap system because the opponent robot might knock into me and that might knock me into a trap and vice versa. Incidents like that might happen. So, and I also might need to pick up higher scoring objects down the road. For example, an object in the blue area is 
much higher. Also, another situation would be that if the robot picks up a six object far away, the efficiency is reduced as it takes much more time to travel back to the deposit point. So some problems I encountered was that the simulation acts very similar to real life, such as the motor randomness. This was an unexpected issue as to me, per simulations are perfect environments. However, I managed to overcome this programming, this error, this issue, by programming room for error. For example, using a color range instead of sticking to one color of my color sensors. And this led to more consistent final results. Another problem I encountered was um, having negative feelings during failures. I overcame this by taking breaks to calm down as well as so during mind blocks. So, and it allowed me to take new perspectives in programming and analyzing bugs. Finally, um, by running each change, each change in a code three to four times compared to one to two times in physical competitions, I can ensure that I will be able to reduce and uh and remove the anomalies from consideration when editing my code, as I had more time com about a total of maybe twelve hours compared to actual competitions where I have about four hours. So I think a second innovative method was um using the swamp land to edit enter the deposit zone. As you can see in the video, the robot aligns itself to the swamp land, reverses, then enter this, the deposit zone. We, I have come to the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for spending so much time listening to my presentation and I hope you have a nice day.